Hey folks, welcome back. Today I have William, William Juan on the show. And if you read the articles on nativescripting.com, then you've probably caught his eye-catching animations. He's posted a few tutorials on there that are just really brilliant. He finds really intricate animations and reproduces them in NativeScript. So I wanted you all to meet William, and you've probably seen him on Twitter before. So now you can put a face to a name. Here's William. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Alex from Native Scripting. Today I have William, William Juan as he goes by on Twitter. And uh, his last name is actually William Chandro Suharto. Wow, that's close. Okay, how would you say it? Uh, Chandro Suharto. The TJ is pronounced as CH. All right, Chandro Suharto. Right. <laughs> not bad, not bad for my first try. Right. <laughs> so where's that from? Is that Indonesian? Yeah, that is Indonesian. Okay. Cool. Well, William, uh, thanks for coming on the show. And William is actually an author on native scripting. He's been authoring a few articles on animations and different techniques that you can do with native script. And that's where I just went to look up his name. So he's been doing some really, really crazy advanced animation stuff. And you can see some of his articles on there. And uh, he can chat more about this. He's also a NativeScript community member for a while now, ever since he was an ambassador. Uh, there was an ambassador program. And uh, he lives in the Chicago area doing NativeScript as his day job. So that's William. Uh, welcome, William. Thanks for having me. Is there anything I missed that you want to add? No, I think you got everything. Very cool. So before you were doing native script, what was your development background? Where do you come from? Um, so I was an industrial engineering major uh, from college. And then I started uh, going into Android development. So I wanted to build apps, uh, mobile apps. I did that for a little bit. And then I transitioned to web just because I could run web basically everywhere. This is where I came across uh, hybrids. So I thought I could use uh, web technologies and build mobile apps. Mm -hmm. um, Native script wasn't the first framework I used uh, in hybrids. I started off with Ionic. Mm -hmm. And then um, my first job actually is where I learned native script. So we did a lot of um, Bluetooth uh, communication with hardwares, mm -hmm. which was really difficult to do with Ionic, at, at least at that time. So we transitioned to native script, which is way more advanced than that native aspect of it. I think this was around native script 2.0, maybe it wasn't okay. as mature as it was. It is right now. Yeah. Uh, but that's where I just started falling in love with the framework. And that's where you first got introduced to native script. Right. Was yeah. it uh, native script core Angular at that time, or what were you? What did you start out with? Um, at the time I started, there were only native script core and Angular. I think Angular was still early as well. So mm -hmm. I, I did a little bit of both, and then. I think once NativeScript Angular grew, I transitioned completely to NativeScript Angular. Got it. So that's your preferred method right now, preferred framework. Right, right. So why all these uh, really interesting animations? What inspires you to do these? Well, I think animation is a very important part of uh, user experience, but it's oftentimes gets overlooked. The reason I create a lot of animation content is just I want to help provide resources to people uh, to help them create complex animations so they can incorporate incorporate that into their app more easily I yeah. think there are a lot of resources out there for app development but i don't think there are as much animation related ones well you haven't been on my youtube channel much have you then <laughs> so that's where <laughs> most of my inspirations came from in the beginning where I, w I used to watch a lot of viewers and then I think William from React Native. Okay. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William uh, Kandel, Kandeyan or something. Yeah. Yeah. Can it be done in React Native? He's got right. some really good stuff on there. So do you do you get inspiration from uh, seeing um, online tutorials about um, other technologies and then try to bring that into Native Script? Yeah, I usually try to at least um, use sites like Dribble and all those more design like concepts and then try to actually implement it in Native Script and see if it's actually doable instead of just concepts. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh, exactly what people love to see these days. They want to see those Dribble animations come to life in a real world Native Script application. Right. And some of those dribble designs are just meant to be designs. You, you just can't transition them into a real world application or it would not be 
uh, sustainable. It would just draw too much power or, right. you know, you can't do it. But a lot of them you can reproduce at least closely. And I guess that's what you're trying to do. Right. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. So what are you working on now? What's your current um, animation technique that you're trying to work out? I'm still looking into um, the more liquid animations, the more fluid animations. So working a lot with the busier, busier pads and a lot of more calling the native APIs. Mm -hmm. And that's really the power that NativeScript gives you, right? Is being able to call into the native API so you can do those native animations using the right. GPU of the device. Right. Yeah, I think not a lot of other platforms let you do that, at least directly, mm -hmm. without actually having to write the bridge yourself. I think right. NativeScript is very powerful, at least in that aspect. So what's your favorite uh, NativeScript plugin, if you have one? Um, I like a lot of the plugins from NStudio. I think I use a lot of them in my apps. Uh, I use Eddie's Firebase plugin a lot too. Yeah, that's a popular one. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so when you develop, are you developing on a simulator or are you developing on a hardware device? I usually start up, uh, start out with a simulator. Um, and then once I get most of the UI done, I test it out on a real device. Cause sometimes there are just some things that are different between simulators and real devices. Mm -hmm. So I tried to test on real devices. Um, early in the process. This what about uh, Android versus iOS? Do you do iOS first and then Android or the other way around? Um, iOS first, usually, just because of the overflows. Those are a little bit more trickier. Ah, okay. You're talking about the safe areas? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit uh, harder to work with sometimes, I guess. When you're learning new technologies, what are you using? Do you like to read blog posts or do you like to watch videos? How do you learn new tech? Um, I do a little bit of both. So for example, like NativeScript, I read their, um, first I start off with their docs and then blogs and then usually go through something like, um, if they have something similar to a course like NativeScript thing, mm -hmm. like, like how oh, Angular has those ultimate Angular, I usually at least get the basics from um, some of the beginner friendly courses and then I once I get a good grasp on it I'll start doing more advanced stuff through blogs or videos okay got it okay so you you do a mix of uh, tutorials as long as it's helpful right I usually start out early with tutorials just because it's more structured yeah that's how I like to do it I like to find a course on plural site for example for new tech that I'm learning for example I'm just uh, uh, starting to learn more about Azure and all the different technologies it brings. I used to use Azure a long time ago, but there's so much new stuff like uh, serverless and pipelines. So I go over to Pluralsight and uh, find a course on there and just take the whole course because learning from a structured course is a really good way to do it instead of me hunting down videos here and there or right. trying to read blog posts that Microsoft blog posts are really long sometimes and it's hard to find anything on their <laughs> site. So those video courses are really good. Right. Um, so besides besides doing native script work as your day job and as your uh, hobby, what else do you do? Do you, do you have any other things you like to do when you're not programming? Um, I play badminton and I go bowling times. Ah, bowling. I really love bowling. I miss doing it. It's just fun getting together with friends and Doing a 300? Yeah, those were the days. I actually, I never got a 300. I'm just kidding. I barely passed 200. <laughs> 200 is very good. From what I remember, I, I was getting like maybe 130 is my highest. So not a very good bowler, but it's fun so anyway. It's a pastime, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, William. Thanks for coming on. And uh, it's really good having you. And I look forward to more tutorials from you on animations and more examples. Thanks for having me.